On today's special edition of Talking TV, we're talking Red Band Society, the new Fox coming-of-age drama about a group of kids and teenagers with serious illnesses living in the pediatric ward of an L.A. hospital. It premieres this Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Pacific Time on Fox, and joining me to discuss the series is Dave Anibal, who plays Dr. Jack McAndrew in the series. Thanks for joining us. Yes, well, thank you very much for having me. I'm glad you didn't let the hot weather deter you from the parking garage to here. Well, I've had three hair changes <laughs> since uh, <laughs> since the you know got out of the car into the <laughs> into the front so uh, front door. We're going to be talking about your hair later because this has been a a big topic on Twitter. Has so, it really? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know if you knew that, but it has. Really? Yes. All right. Yes. I'm into that. All right. Okay. But first, we're going to start with the surname of your character on the show, Dr. McAndrew. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people were kind of like, you know, this calls up. It seems sort of cheeky tongue. Uh, uh, tongue and cheek. Tongue and cheek. Yeah. Thank you. Teamwork doesn't seem work. Thank I'm you. I love it. Got me. Um, of, you know, the Grey's Anatomy, Dr. McSteamy and all this stuff. Um, but uh, Margaret Nagel, who developed the series for Fox, also revealed that it's sort of based on a doctor out here in L.A., right? Mm, yes. yes, she Why did. Why don't you talk a little bit about this character and your yeah. thoughts on the name, too? Yeah, well, you know, I, uh, Margaret had originally told me that this is based off her friend and a, uh, you know, a top pediatric doctor out here, and uh, you know, which is very exciting. You know, I think any time there's a sort of realism to a character, it's, mm -hmm. it sort of helps when you get from the writer, especially in a pilot process right. of, of creating and... And uh, yeah, I just I'm very excited. I mean, to play, uh, you know, I think it's changed a little bit. I was a I was a pediatric surgeon, which uh -huh. I still am, but now I think I'm the head of pediatrics <laughs> in the hospital. You know, and first year shows are like, oh, what are we? Okay, we're <laughs> yeah, we're navigating, yeah, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, it's 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 great. I think uh, obviously, you know, to be working with these kids and in, in, in such an important show, I believe, right now, and and you know, telling a story from the kids' point of view in the hospital, and you know, obviously, it's a it's a heavy subject matter, but the show is so uplifting and inspiring, and uh, you know, I I just really you know I'm happy to be a part of it and the 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 head doc. The you head know? doc. Well, have you seen the promos? Because they sort of do a play like on Breakfast Club, and it mm. says like the mean girl and the boy in coma or whatever, and then it's you and it's Hunky Doc. Do you like yeah, that? Yeah, well, that was my pitch. Yeah. yeah, I really, I set that in. I set him like three different options. It was hot doc, great hair doc, <laughs> and just like awesome freckled doc. And, uh, you know, hot doc, yeah. Yeah, that they was just, a good they, one. They went with it. They yeah. went with it. They went with it. I mean, what were your thoughts when you saw the script during pilot season, and what did you think? Were you worried, are people going to be okay with this? Or did, you know, seeing the success of Fault in Our Stars and how people People sort of gravitated toward that. Like, well, this was this was uh, before Fault in mm -hmm. Our Stars. Uh, obviously, not before the, the movie, book. but before it was released. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I hadn't read it, so I was you know I was reading the script, and it was sort of mid pilot season. And pilot season for numerous people in the industry is kind of uh, it's chaotic. You know, yeah. there's a lot of scripts coming in and auditions, and and you know for producers and everyone's mm -hmm. in, it's like the system I, I think is flawed. I don't want to say it, but uh. But anyway, so, you know, reading a bunch of scripts and, you know, it was some okay ones, but uh, nothing that was really great until I read this one. And, uh, I mean, I read it and, you know, tears started welling up reading. It was allergy season. Yeah. I forgot my clarinet. <laughs> uh, I don't know, you know, where to pinpoint sure, the emotional sure. uh -huh. response to it. But, yeah, I, I think it was really it was a wonderful, wonderful script. And then you hear, you know, names like Octavia Spencer mm -hmm. and Steven Spielberg being attached to it. And... And, you know, I felt very honored that they wanted to see me for it. So, you know, it, it then became that process. And then once I read it, it was like, wow, I really want this. And, you know, I feel like this potentially could be, you know, bigger than us and, and you know, sort of special message that we can sort of put out there into the world. And, and you know, trust me, I'm a, I'm a diehard Breaking Bad, Game of yes. Thrones and Walking Dead. You know, a lot of people getting killed off. Right. And, uh, you know, it was pretty heavy, heavy stuff. Yes. So it was nice to ironically... Uh, be in a show with this heavy subject matter, but we don't really, you know, that's not where our show lives in, in mm -hmm. terms of tone, and it's mm -hmm. funnier and lighter, and you know, which is which is pretty exciting. Right, because it's not a total weep fest. No, right? no, no, no. Yeah, there, I think they you earn that that happy cry at the end for a how much comedy I believe they put into the script and how much you care for the kids, and that's mm -hmm. you know character development and, right. and you know how great these kids are as actors. Mm -hmm. And it's based off a series that aired in Spain, mm -hmm. right? Did yeah. you get a chance to watch any of that we before? Watched the, uh, yeah, watch the pilot, you know, with the, the English subtitles. <laughs> My wife speaks fluent Spanish. I'm like, what did they say? 
She's like, she said, thank you. Uh -huh. like, oh, I gotta catch up on that, you know. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's actually based off a true story, and uh, we got to meet him, Albert Espinosa, who came to our set during the filming of the pilot. Wow. And uh, he has uh, grew up in a hospital, you know, from age of 14 to I think he was like 23, you know, in and out, and that's the thing, you're in and out of these hospitals, but lost a lung, lost a leg. Um, and but still has the you know the the bravest spirit mm -hmm. and uh, you know I think everything you know uh, there's a lesson learned in everything and and everything is happening for a reason and it was mm -hmm. just so great to meet him he's so inspirational and and uh, you know we're very blessed to have him come out so and you know the series is extremely successful over in Europe right. that series yeah. so uh, you know I think pressure. Um, yeah pressure. <laughs> but you know I think that's why you put the uh, the Stevens Spielbergs uh -huh. of the world yes. and and Amblin and Fox and you know you trust them to right. uh, to make those appropriate producer decisions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's take some questions from the fans. Great, both of them. Yeah. Mom, Dad, thanks for uh, for writing in. <laughs> One was how hard was it reading the scripts? I mean, you you're about to shoot episode six, so you know a lot more than I've even read. Mm -hmm. But was it very emotional? How do you deal with it? Uh, yeah, like I said, when I when I read the first pilot script, I, I mean, instantly, I I honestly believe it was page three where I was sucked in, and uh, you know, I just you know, it was something different, and to read a a, a hospital drama that's not about the doctors and the nurses. Mm -hmm say as much as a point of view from the kids and I was like wow that's really interesting that's a new angle on on something I haven't seen and you know further down the line when you know Octavia and I were doing research you know we visited a few children's hospitals and and to go in and, and speak with a few of these kids um, you know dealing with these huge illnesses mm -hmm. but for them to have such a sense of humor still right. uh, really hit home with why this script is written the way it is because you know this is based off of uh, mm -hmm. Margaret Nagel's personal experience of right. her little brother her was little in a coma. <laughs> so she was in a hospital and it was like, you know, these kids are cracking jokes and they're still like, you know, ooh, the boy down the hall is right. really cute. And it was like, wow, okay, this is this is true. This right. is really how they talk. They don't, you know, they're not woe is me and mm -hmm. they're not pitying themselves. They're, mm -hmm. they're uh, you know, they're living their life. Let's talk more about some of the research you did. Um, I I think I remember you, or was it Margaret, saying that you sort of uh, shadowed her cousin during surgery? This was awesome, yes. Okay. This was, uh, Tell me more about uh, this. Dr. Peter Doubler at St. <laughs> Joseph's. You're welcome, Doc. That's a free round of golf uh, on you. Uh, no, he's literally the best. He's Margaret's cousin, and he's a uh, vascular surgeon down there in Atlanta. And uh, I, you know, exchanged emails with him and uh, out of nowhere I was out to dinner with my wife and he's like hey I have a, a surgery first thing in the morning would you like to stand in on it and I was like Phew. I mean I'm not really like a, a blood guy or needles or you know I watch ER I'm like, <laughs> don't tell anyone or, or America but um, but uh, yeah, I mean that's an opportunity you couldn't pass up, and uh, so I went in, I scrubbed in. Uh, all the uh, yeah, I scrubbed in. I got the you know I was in the full scrubs, and you know so I was, of course stood back. I'm like I took over the surgery. I'm like excuse me, I stayed at Holiday Inn Express yeah. last night. Uh -huh, I got this. I got it. But yes. um, yeah, so he really it was truly an amazing experience, and and I had such an appreciation of you know how heroic these guys are and surgeons, and you know you go in with a problem, and boom, they fix it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, it was a carotid endarterectomy, mm -hmm. basically, which is in the carotid artery, and you can have something called a plaque buildup, which can go to your brain and cause a heart attack. And this, you know, surgeon just walks in there, boom, opens it up, picks it out. He's like pointing stuff out. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh god, oh god. And he's funny. He's warning me as we walk in. He's like, look. This isn't for everyone. Uh -huh. Okay, you know, if you if at a certain point you start getting a little dizzy or lightheaded, I was like, you know, I'm I'm, I'm like, oh my god, I got a man up here. I was like, <laughs> you know, if he can do it, I can do it. Right. I was like, <laughs> I was like, he's right. Oh my god, he's right. <laughs> but it was really, uh, you know, it was really such an incredible experience that I, you know, I don't think <laughs> a lot of people get to do. And you know, some of the cool perks about being an actor, is uh -huh. you get you know opportunities like that, and you know, just such an appreciation for you know medical professionals that's and what they do. Yeah. It's a three-hour-long answer to your question. No, yeah, that's, like, uh, Dave, that's it. We're out of time. Thanks I'm for just, coming I'm, up. Well, but you've also visited, um, I'm looking at yeah. that, the Mattel Children's Hospital yeah, yeah. and the, the Daltrey Townsend. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so talk to me about what you experienced there and talking maybe to those doctors because I would imagine dealing with kids and young adults mm. 
is like a lot to take in in yes. terms of how to separate and you know I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I uh, we were actually uh, taken around by a child life specialist in the Mattel Center, and I had no idea what that was or or what that job entails. And that job is basically, you know, when a child comes in, you know, she's there for them to either explain what's going on with them or maybe a parent. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, she took us around. We uh, took a tour of the ER and then we took a tour of the children's floor in the hospital and we got to meet a few of the patients and and uh, I mean it was really it's you know it's a game changer it's a uh, you know I, this is why I wear my red band society my bracelet because you know after going there and, and seeing that you know you feel like no matter what you're complaining about yeah. there's there's kids that are going through much worse and who are much braver mm -hmm. than than myself so it's my own little personal reminder but uh, yeah we met this you know 14 year old girl with uh, leukemia who uh, invite was kind enough to invite us into her room and you know she was talking to us about you know painting and then her bucket list and the first thing on her bucket list was to wear high heels oh. you know and it was it was just and like the second one was like baking muffins and and she's going to be okay, you know, I, I guess, you know, she, she'll be fine. Eighty-five percent uh, of kids that are diagnosed with these various illnesses actually survive and right. make it through. And that's sort of, you know, again, where our show lives, everyone thinks everyone's going to mm -hmm. die on the mm -hmm. show, and that's that's not the case at all. And um, But, uh, you know, she was saying, and the second one was baking muffins on her list, and I was like, oh, you can knock off two of those at the same time. You wear some heels <laughs> wear and make some muffins. I gave you like, son, <laughs> you don't wear heels and bake at the same time. I was like, ooh. I was like, Maybe listen to Octavia on this one. I was like, yeah, kind of out of my element on this, but uh, but it was. I mean, again, it's um, it was really you know personally, it was life changing. I mean, obviously, you learn a lot as an actor. You know what you want to bring to the table and the responsibility. You know, of playing these you know pediatricians and you know really caregivers and and people that have dedicated their lives to to taking care of others, strangers, and uh, you know the and the ups and downs that that come with that. Well, and the environment is so key, too. I mean, we see the rooms on the show, and it probably mm. looks extravagant, but that's what you... Yeah, that's, they, that's and, you know, how it is. You know what's very cool at the uh, Mattel Center, which I did not know as well, is uh, they let the kids decorate their room however they want, mm. even if they're only staying for one night. And, you know, I, I thought that was pretty cool where, you know, you don't have to be staying there for any length of time. You can mm -hmm. come in there. You're there for one night. You get, mm -hmm. you know, it's all kinds of paintings and drawings. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I kept giving out my headshot. It was weird. The kids kept <laughs> ripping them up and throwing them away. I'm like, guys, <laughs> let's work with me here. You know, like, throw me a bone. Jeez. Wanted your headshot up. Yeah, you know, it's maybe more me. You know, like, look at the hair on that guy. <laughs> nice. Nice. How is it to play the adult to these kids. It's Is different. That weird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different. I know you're getting that right now. You're like, wow, he's 13. Uh, I get that all the time, <laughs> my wife. But um, yeah, no, it's a, it's actually it's a brand new position that I that I've been in in my in my life and my career, and I think it's really fun. I think yeah. uh, you know there's a certain responsibility that comes along with that, and I know Octavia and I both feel that that you know as as much advice as we can give them in in terms of. Um, you know the business and how to act on set, and you know I mean these they're they're great kids and they're raised by great families, so it's not like we we have a lot of work to do. But you know the the relationship is also symbiotic because they're teaching us about right. all this stuff, yeah, yeah. and you know the the twitters <laughs> and the you know I'm like yo, Are you getting tutorials? Yeah, I'm like for real, I'm like what apps we got out there these days, you know? And it's uh it's great. I mean we we were having so much fun down there. It's mm -hmm. um you know and I feel that. I was fortunate enough to be on Brothers and Sisters. It was five years, and I think one of the reasons why that show worked so well was chemistry. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that we concretely have on this show uh, is chemistry. We all get along so well, and and we're hanging out, you know, when we're not working, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. You know, my friend just started watching Brothers and Sisters because it's in syndication, mm -hmm. and I was telling her, you know, oh, he's going to be on a new show, and she's like. How do like how do I do that? Like how do I watch him here and watch this? She's like trying it's to. It's the same thing. I'm, I'm like, the same guy, guys. I'm not. Yeah. I don't think that's girl. that difficult. Like <laughs> it's not like weird or I don't know, but. Yeah, so, you know, it's it's fine. I mean, you know, Netflix and the yeah. times have changed, you know, where you can just sit there and binge watch yeah. shows. And, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, people are, are catching up on that show that, mm -hmm. that haven't. And, you know, I hope in the future, same with uh, with Red Band Red Society. Band. How about on set? Like, are is it like the kids over here and you and Octavia and the adults over here? Or is there yeah, like... We're, we're all, you know, we're all hanging out and uh, uh, all the time I actually introduce them to a, a board game, Settlers, Nerd Alert. I've never heard. 
alert this. Nerd alert. Uh, yeah, exactly. Nerd alert. Uh, it's, a, it's a real nerdy but fantastic board game. What does it involve? Change your life. Uh, What's the goal? Like, you know, there's like dice and there's cards and there's trading and you can talk. Okay. And yeah, I, you know, once you get bit, you get bit, you know? But anyway, so I taught him this game and uh, now the kids have been over my, you know, my apartment four nights in a row. We're having settlers <laughs> marathons and we're playing at work and, uh, you know, good old clean fashion fun. Nice, nice. How about what's the trick to being playing a doctor? Like, is it all in like opening and closing folders, or how do you deal with the jargon? Like, what's the deal there? Yeah, basically, uh, you know, once they put that stethoscope on, you know, I'm like, wow, this feels real. You know, I'm like, uh, you know, they, it's funny at work, you know, you know, PAs are like, you mm -hmm. know, sort of letting, yeah. alerting everybody know where we are, and you know, mm -hmm. the Dave's walking a set, but they call me Doctor Dave walking a set. Um, Clearly, I'm not a real doctor. Uh -huh. uh, when I walk on, I'm like, uh, yeah, fake doctors here, guys. Let's, uh, let's get ready to rock. And, uh, you know, they're all, I'm like, if someone goes down on set, you know, I'm running the other way. I'll throw the stethoscope out, take it off. I'll check your, for your pulse, maybe, in the wrong place, probably. But uh, then I'm out. I was going to say, like, do you feel like you can now tell people how to take care of themselves? Yeah. No? No. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, look, I'm going to Google it just like everyone else. So I'm like, look, you should be drinking tea, I think, <laughs> green tea or something. I know. I was checking out, like, WebMD because I was like, am I, like, really low? Very slow, by the <laughs> I way. Was like, am I, I low? Everything. Am I low on iron here? And it says, like, you'll know you're low on iron if you crave clay, eating clay. And I was like, okay, what I haven't the... reached that part yet. <laughs> wow. I was like, Good to know. Awkward. Good to know. It's like, do I want bacon today or, <laughs> or clay? Oh, hey. I thought that was so strange. Oh, iron deficient. That's what it is. It's yeah. weird, right? That is weird. Yeah, that is a slippery slope. <laughs> I mean, you can, uh, you know, and I, of course, uh, you know, through the research, and I bought all my, uh, you know. Medical terms for dummies. For dummies. Yeah, Audrey walks in. It's like a me you know medical school <laughs> lab in my uh, in my place. Of course, they haven't been opened yet, but uh, you know they look great. <laughs> Uh, and you know, trying to learn these terms, and you know, it's like a whole, whole other, other language. So, well, do you write it like? I, I think it was like George Clooney who said he used to like put it on the, um, the gurneys, like the stuff. Oh yeah, there's all kinds of that. tricks. Oh, mm -hmm. It's been in the medical files. I'm yeah. like, oh, this one, blah blah blah. Mm, yeah, hello. Oh, so the highlighted part's yeah. me right there. Oh, yeah. Cut. I need another. Nice. Yeah. Okay, no, don't switch know. folders. My lines are in there. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. I mean that the. the uh, the salt and pepper hair has been quite the topic oh. um, since like previews came out. Did you realize that your hair has become a topic of conversation? I realized my hair is getting salt and pepper. I'll tell you that much. Uh, that's uh, we jumped into fast it's forward. Like people mode are like, that. it's like a top. It's it's all the rage right now. You know, it's funny. Uh, it's 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 crazy because uh, it's it's you know it's happening. It's uh, I married <laughs> a Cuban. It. It's like woof, dial that up a notch. <laughs> um, is she watching this? <laughs> Um, no, that's uh, yeah, that's very real, and <laughs> you know, it's, I, uh, it's every you know every day I'm you know you, you're in front of the mirror, so it's like wow, this is uh, this is happening. This is, I can't this stop is, it. You know, now my shoulder hair is gray. I was like, oh god, this is I'm on a one way road yeah, here. Hi, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's cool. You know, it's funny. Ob uh, oddly enough, in the last like month, uh, I've gotten compliment like out. You know, restaurants yeah, like it weird, like for guys. like for you know, yeah. from like dudes who are like, hey, so yeah, I got your uh, wine coming, great hair by the way. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. I was like, babe, do you hear? Well, I'm it always it. works for guys, girls not so much. Girl, well, great hair. I mean, come on, that works for a girl. <laughs> no, like people don't like compliment it as much as when guys have it. I don't know. I, uh, well, I know, okay, well, which, all, which only means that I got to step it up now. Every girl, I'm like, hey, great hair and shoes. <laughs> Right? Not yet. Yeah, okay, okay. Don't bake in them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got another question. Um, okay. how, how are you going to watch the premiere on Wednesday, and will you be on Twitter that night? Uh, I will be. I feel like Fox has to be like, you need to live tweet this, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think Fox will be sitting right in the room right <laughs> next to us being like, okay, you got to no, yeah, be funny, exactly. be funny, be cool. Exactly. Uh, no, I think uh, the plan is to watch it with, uh, with the cast, uh, all the kids. We're going to have a little party and, uh, and live tweet. And try and steal as many followers from them as I can. Okay. Um, yeah, they're gonna teach yeah. me, uh, you know, how to do uh, how to do all that stuff. But yeah, I think it's exciting. You get with your your cast, and you mm -hmm. you sort of 
you, you know, you're watching, but you're going through memories, and you're like, oh my god, I remember that day, and uh, and plus, you know, obviously nowadays the interaction with the fans is very it's cool crucial. and immediate uh -huh. and uh, scary, yes. but it's, uh, I think it's exciting. It's, uh, it's, you know, we're in a brave new world. Do you give each other hard times if someone's not wearing the red band? Uh, no, not yet, you know, not because yet. we're, you know, now we're working, so we can, oh, you, you know. can't wear it all the time. Although, I think, you know, at a certain point, Doc's got to get a red band. You know, yes. get me in the, you know, get me in the circle. Come on. You know, I'm like, God, just because I'm the old salt and pepper <laughs> guy, like, doesn't mean I can't be in the gas. Yes. You know, yes. like, what's going on, RBS, exactly. red RBS. Band. <laughs> Yes. Um, and speaking of which, I mean, in the, in the pilot, um, there's a lot of setting up, obviously, mm -hmm. like, and we learn more about the kids than maybe some of the adults, but as time moves on and you knowing because you've are you're about to shoot episode six like how much more will we find out about Dr. McAndrew? We just learned that Mandy Moore is going to yes, yeah, your, just saw that. play your ex fiance. So yeah. talk to us about what we might be seeing. Uh, well, first of all, that's very exciting. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we're, we're big fans of hers. And uh, obviously, you know, you bring that sort of name power and star power to a show. It's great. And, you know, she'll have a great time with us in Atlanta. It's, it's a lot of fun. But yeah, you know, in the next couple episodes, we definitely sort of get more of the adult story. And, uh, you know, we, I know we follow McAndrew home. You know, we see where he lives, and uh, and and a little bit in the in the second episode of of how he may deal with some of the hardships mm -hmm. of, of of that particular you mm -hmm. know job. So it's cool. I you know it was one of the things we were told, obviously, and uh, you know at the the beginning of the show is that we will you know talk more about the adults. Mm -hmm. and, I believe when you have Octavia Spencer, an Oscar winner, you gotta, you better make sure. So yeah, good. you're yeah. telling you, like we don't, we don't want to waste Octavia. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so of course, yeah, you know they're they're telling more of the uh, adult stories, adult and, story. and you know that that personal relationship with McAndrew and Nurse Jackson, that sort of work marriage, and mm -hmm. and their relationship is been really fun. I mean, Octavia and I are inseparable, so it's uh, it's a lot of fun to uh, to play with her. What can you tell us about Octavia? Um, what is she like? I was she truly was besides. She, Embracing of of settlers or what was the name? Oh uh, well, I haven't I haven't crossed that. Yeah, yeah, I haven't crossed. Okay. Yeah, I haven't crossed that bridge yet with her. Just because I know she's gonna win. Or, <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, I'll keep her on the side yeah, for a while, uh -huh. develop my skills. You uh -huh. know, uh, I gotta be honest, she's fantastic, and uh, and I truly mean that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to have Mama Bear there, and uh, you know, especially in particular, being in a show with mostly kids and and underage kids, and you know, being able to hang out, and you know, she just threw an impromptu uh, cooking party at her house, oh, which nice. was uh, which was a lot of fun. So we all went and cooked up a meal together. What did and, you uh, cook? Uh, well, you know, we had different stations. I was in charge of the salad. Uh, that's <laughs> truly uh, where they don't trust the uh, they don't trust the salt and pepper guy. Like, okay, so you're gonna like make the leaves over there. And, uh, nice. Yeah, and then uh, actually little little Griffin, uh, Coma Boy, was in charge of grilling peaches, and he was out there alone on the grill. I was like, mm, maybe I should go out there and, and help out. The kid, he's like, phew, phew, emerald, bam, bam. I'm like doing one thing, he's like, I got yeah, a date. I got, well, I got a doctor uh -huh, date. So uh -huh. I'm like, mm, okay. So, uh, yes, I mean, she's, she's wonderful. She really is, and, uh, you know, we feel, again, going back to that chemistry thing, it's all, you know, we're all very lucky, and, uh, you know, I think it starts with her. Well, and I told, I warned you ahead of time that I would be asking about Buster because I'm the real star of the show. Real star. I'm obsessed with dogs, and I can't have one in my apartment, so uh, I latch on to other people. Time to move. Has he made it out to Atlanta? Uh, he has not made it out to Atlanta yet. He's at the in-laws, right? They're taking good care of Buster. Uh, traveling with English Bulldogs can be a little little tricky, little especially tricky. when you're doing a new show and you don't know how long you're going to be there. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but, you know, he's living it up at Grandma and Grandpa's house. They have three dogs there. So he's, uh, Buster loves dogs. He's just, <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a funny video that my, uh, my I think my wife tweeted out. Uh, it was her parents, my in-laws, doing the, uh, the ice bucket challenge. <laughs> Which is very funny, and, and, Buster and their accents. And Buster makes a cameo, gets hosed down in the middle of it. So uh, you should check it out. Poor Buster. <laughs> um, so with the show, I don't want to like uh, spoil anything, but mm -hmm. with the show premiering Wednesday, is there a scene that you're particularly excited for people to see, or that you think is what is going to hook viewers in? Um, the you last know, last five minutes for me, it's like. I know. I, I think that's one of my yeah. favorite. That's one of my favorite scenes. You know, the scene at the end, which I don't, don't want to give yeah. away too much with uh, with Nolan and and uh, and you know what what he does at the end before surgery. Mm -hmm. But you know, overall, I think it's just a really you know. I, uh, 
uh, well done pilot. I'm really glad to be a part of it. I think that doesn't always happen. Sometimes you, uh, you know, you're on a show and you're, hmm? yeah. And you're like, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. six month lease. Good. All right. Where, where to? Where, where off to next? You right. know. But uh, this one just feels it's just got a real, you know, good feeling to it, and everyone's working real hard down there. So I think, uh, you know, Wednesday night, I, you know. I, I would say to the people who are deterred by the subject matter to give it that shot and, and be pleasantly surprised because I think most people are. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us. We're done already? On, Half an hour? On your birthday. Oh, my God. On his birthday, Guys, sit people, down. Don't stop clapping. We thank gave, you. We gave him Skittles. Yes. In yes. lieu of a birthday cake. <laughs> um, but thank you it's so a small much. small bag, by the way. We're going to work on it. <laughs> Red Band Society premieres Wednesday on Fox. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.